our God. Uh, how many of you know the Lord is our God? Uh, the Lord is strong and he's mighty and worthy to be praised. How many of you know the Lord is worthy? The Lord is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the sand. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy to be praised. I see why the psalmist said, Oh, back the fire.
The Lord is mighty. The Lord is great and mighty and powerful. Come on and just give the Lord a praise in this place. All of you, the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. How many of you love the Lord on today? How many of you pray for him today?
scripture reading. Let the church stand.
just want to show the shirts. We still have some in gray, and we, and we have them also in burgundy. And I just want to say thank you for those who have already supported. And if there is someone who would like to still purchase a shirt, please see either myself or Bishop. Our scripture for this last Sunday of February for the love scripture. This is Romans 12 and 10. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, and honor preferring one to another. And also for our Black History, um, this last this our last study for Black History Month, we're going to honor someone that we all know of. This candidate for this last Sunday of Black History Month is someone who we all know. He is. Uh, he is. He was. A, he was one of the African American firefighters here in Erie, PA. He completed local, state, and national training to advance his career in the region. His further advance to become the first African American fire chief. He superheaded many incentives in health, wellness, mental, and physical evaluation, updating and standardizing gear and equipment dealing with issues for female firefighters, and handling financial issues. He has been an inspiration to Erie, and we thank him for his dedication and his services. We thank God. For Brother Greg Martin. God bless you, Brother Greg Martin. Yes. The New Horizon Daycare Center would like to extend to the community our open enrollment for the ages 3 up to the age of 12. Hours of operation is Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Christian Ministries would like to invite everyone to our services. Our services is Sunday edu Christian education at 9.30 a.m., morning worship at 11 a.m., Wednesday's Bible study at 6 p.m., and Friday prayer at 6 p.m. Here at Christian Ministries, we have vision, purpose, and core values. Our vision is to be a caring fellowship leading souls to Jesus Christ, strengthening members families, making disciples, and equipping them for community service. Our purpose is to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ through effective, responsible ministry and intentionally creative, dynamic fellowship. Our core values are to establish, to uphold the kingdom of God. These values will lead and guide us if we store them in our hearts and obey as we ought. We value love, we value persistence, we value commitment, we value sacrifice, and we value services. These are our services for today. Services in the hand of our bishop. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. We certainly thank God and praise Amen. God for the service thus far. Amen. We thank God. Dad.
from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, these worthy to be praised. And we thank God for Sister Shakara too, being our most wonderful. And we thank you and praise God for her. Amen. And each and every one of you that have come out to fresh your way to be in the house of the Lord. I don't take it for granted, and we don't take it for granted that you've chosen uh, to come to this place. There's a lot of places you could have been, uh, but there's a good thing that you're here in the house of the Lord. So right now we want to certainly change the order of our service on today. And uh, it's blessing time. It's blessing time in the sanctuary. Amen. We certainly want to, uh, as Deacon Gills, to come on up. And uh, Lord loves a cheerful giver. And this is our last week uh, and last Sunday in the month. Amen. So we want to go out strong, strong in the Lord. And we certainly do appreciate your giving and giving helps to keep things moving in the right direction. And we certainly thank God for that. Amen. We want to ask the church to stand. And your giving, Lord, Lord said, if you give, he'll bless you. How many believe that? How many are witnesses to that? Blessing of the Lord. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we prepare our hearts to give to sow seed in the kingdom, we pray, Lord, that you break up the foul ground and that you would alone, Lord, that you would take this seed, Lord, and, and water it and preserve it, that it grows, and Lord, that it reaps a harvest. Bless each and every one that is giving on today. 30, 60, and 100 fold, according to your will, according to your riches and glory. And bless that which is given, Lord, to be used for the building of your kingdom. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. 
Psalm 16, and let us drop down to verse number 10. It says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I want to read that verse 11 again. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there is pleasures forevermore. O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that your word is anointed. Anoint me thy servant, anoint these thy great people. And Lord, grant the gold others, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Verse 11. I want to take a thought from that because there in thy presence is fullness of joy. My subject for today is in his presence. The song that we got finished singing is a great segue into this particular sermon. Because we have to know that in the presence of the Lord there is joy. In the presence of the Lord there is liberty. And since the beginning of time, 
since the beginning of time. People have been trying to get away from the presence of the Lord. If we were to go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 3, verse number 8, after Adam and Eve fell into sin, the Bible says that they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. And I was thinking, when I was reading that scripture, how can they hear God's voice walking? <laughs> but they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And then in Genesis chapter number 4, verse 16, we see that when Cain slew his brother and he was put out of the garden, and the Bible says that Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. And it would seem like those that were in trouble they don't like being in his presence. Those that have fallen short, they don't like to be in the presence of the Lord. Well, the Bible, the Bible doesn't tell you that. The Bible or God would have you to come into his presence. Yeah. Yes. Because it's in his presence you can receive help. It's in his presence that you can receive healing. It's in his presence you can receive deliverance. The scripture tells us that we ought to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need in our time of trouble. The Bible tells us that a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. God knows that we have trouble. We used to sing a song, Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. But the refrain says, but I know in Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. After a while. So when we don't come into the presence of the Lord, we hide ourselves. We're literally hiding ourselves from our deliverance. When we hide ourselves from the Lord, we're hiding ourselves from his, his mercy and his grace. And I have to pause, pause here and ask you a question. Can you really hide from the Lord? Adam and Eve, they tried to hide in the garden, the Bible says, among the trees in the garden. But can a tree really hide you from the Lord? Can, 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 can the sea hide you from the Lord? Uh, can a mountain hide you from the Lord? The Bible says that all things are open and naked before the Lord. Before the Lord. You know, when, when David got into trouble, and, and you know, he sinned against God by, by really not being about his father's business. And, and, and he was on his, in his house, and, and Bathsheba was taking a bath on his rooftop. And, and the Bible says that he looked at her and desired her and, and, and brought her over to his house. And you know the story. They had relations and they had a child. And, and David tried to cover up his sins. And David tried to cover up what he was doing. And then when it was all said and done, David tried to go on his merry way like nothing has really happened. But did God see David? Did God see David? Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk back to me today. Uh, God saw David, uh, and, and, and as David was trying to go on his merry way, God sent him some help. You know, sometimes we, we get into conditions and can get into predicaments and try to go along our merry way like we haven't done anything wrong, but 
God will send you some help. Yeah. Uh, we ought to thank God for the help. We ought to thank God for the help because it's not God's will that anybody should perish. It's not the will of God that anybody, oh God, oh God, should not should perish and, and, and die. But God's will and God's desire is that we might have life and that more abundant. God sent David some help by the name of Nathaniel the prophet. And y'all know the story. Nathaniel gave David a parable uh, about a new lamb and, and a great king that took the new lamb and, and, and away from the pauper and, and, and killed the lamb and ate it. And, and Nathaniel said, what should be done to the great king? And David said, he should be dead. He should be put to death. And Nathaniel said, thou art the man, David. Thou art the man. Thou art the man. And that thing convicted the heart. It convicted the heart of David. Uh, and David begins to be stirred in his spirit. And he begins to write, he begins to write the Psalms. And in that Psalm that David wrote, the 50th Psalm, David said in that particular Psalm that, Lord, don't cast me away from thy presence. Uh, Lord, don't take your spirit away from me. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Lord, whatever you do, don't take me away from thy presence. Don't take me away from thy presence. And take not thy spirit away from me. We need to be in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we need to be in his presence. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Oh, uh, you know, a lot of people try to get joy in a lot of different places, but the only real place you can get real joy is with the Lord. Oh, uh, and when you get that real joy with the Lord, the joy of the Lord really becomes your strength. It becomes your strength. Oh, uh, when you get into the presence of the Lord, you forget about your troubles. You forget about your problems. And you get into his presence and you begin to worship him. And the Lord helps you in that right yeah. Oh, God, the enemy would have us to run away from God. But God says he wants you to run to him. In fact, he wants you to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. He wants you to enter into his courts with praise. He, he wants you to magnify his holy name. Why? Because the Lord is present with thee. He's present with thee to help thee. He's present with thee to, uh, to deliver you out of all of your trouble. Out of all of your fear. Oh God, you know, we have to understand, beloved, and then I'm finished here on today. We have to understand that, 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 you know, God is always near. Uh, the Bible said he is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Uh, oh my God, whatever we're doing, God is there. Uh, whatever we're doing good, God is there. He's omnipresent. Oh God, whatever we're doing bad, God is there. Uh, because he's omniscient and he's omnipresent and he's omnipotent. But what, what brings in the presence of God is when you begin to praise him. When you begin to worship him. 
joy. Ah, there's fullness of joy. The scripture says in my closing here, at his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want to be happy. Uh, I want to be happy. Uh, in fact, if you ask me, I deserve to be happy. Uh, how many of you feel like that today? Uh, that you want to be happy. Uh, and you desire to be happy. Uh, and God knows. Uh, God knows you deserve to be happy. Uh, but you know, you won't find your happiness uh, in the things that are of the world. Uh, you won't find no happiness. Uh, it'll be a fleeting moment of happiness, but then those things will turn on you. Uh, and you can be happy uh, when you buy your first ride, but when that ride breaks down, you ain't going to be so happy. Uh, and you can have, be happy when you have your house, but when they kind of fall clothes on you, you ain't going to be happy. Uh, but when you come to the Lord, hallelujah, uh, there is joy forevermore.
your mindset is, is focused on him. Oh, he'll show up when you begin to praise him. He'll show up when you begin to worship him. He'll show up when you begin to say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. When we walk into the sanctuary, sometimes I, I look at your faces. Sometimes I, I see the struggle. I see the struggle in your face. Uh, can I just be honest here on today? I see the burden in your face. Oh, but, but what we have to realize when the songs of Zion are going, uh, it doesn't matter how you feel. Uh, it's about what you know. Uh, and if you know that if you just begin to praise Him, uh, if you just begin to say, Lord, I thank you. If you just begin to, oh, just cause yourself to wave your hand. If you just cause yourself to say, Lord, I thank you. Uh, oh, my God. He'll come and lift that heaven burden. He'll come and give you joy unspeakable. He'll come and deliver you at that God. He'll come and change your countenance. He'll come and change your way of thinking. He'll come and give you joy. Hey, hallelujah. You have to walk out of here with strength. You walk out of here with an anointing. You walk out of here with revelation. You walk out of here with some power. You walk out of here being able to overcome. Oh, God. Can I just preach here today? Oh, God. Oh, God.
Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Psalms. Psalms 51. If you haven't said amen. David said, have mercy upon me. <laughs> See, he was trying to get back in his presence. Uh, if you fall, fallen off uh, and you, you got out of the presence of God for whatever reason, you need to cry out to him and say, have mercy on me.
I came to him. You know, a lot of us don't realize how much we need him until we surrender to him. Oh God, and when you surrender to him, then you ought to ask yourself the question, how come I haven't done it huh? long before now? Oh, I thought my life would have been better if I had just surrendered a long time ago. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, those, Lord, that have fallen short of your glory, you can come down to the altar. Hallelujah, receive prayer, and the Lord will forgive you of all your sins. Those that want to get baptized in the name of Jesus, we've got water to baptize you in. And if you commit your life to God, God will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, how many of you know you need Him? Lord, I need Him. Hallelujah, I need the Lord. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to say that I need Him. If, if I didn't have the Lord taking uh, fields in my life, oh, my whole life would be jacked up. Yeah. Hallelujah, my God. But, but because the Lord yes, is my shepherd, oh, uh, as, the, as the mother said, my shall not walk. Oh, gracious Father, we yes. pray for this great congregation. We ask you, Lord, that you bless them. Yes. Strengthen the Lord. Oh. Give us what we need. And Lord, bless us, Lord, to... to Go and to be in your presence, to remain in your presence, and to walk in your presence, and to know that you're only a prayer away. Oh God, that you're only a prayer away. Hallelujah, Lord, you said in your word that a broken spirit and a contrite heart, you will in no wise despise. And Father, we thank you, and we praise you, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We lift up your hands, one Lord, all of them, one Lord. One faith, one baptism, in Jesus' name, amen.